According to Ezekiel 28, Satan is the most intelligent and beautiful creature God created. And what he did is a mirror image of what the Jews did and what the born again have done and how God is dealing with it. So looking at Ezekiel 28, if you look at the whole thing, the whole chapter, it's talking about the king of Tyre. However, we know that it's actually also talking about Satan because there were only two humans in the Garden of Eden and not one of them was the king of Tyre. It was Adam and Eve. And so this is speaking of Satan. God says that he was the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He was in Eden, the garden of God, anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you, blameless in your ways from the day you were created, till wickedness was found in you. He was the most beautiful and intelligent creature God created, and in the New Testament in Hebrews we're told that all the angels are supposed to be ministering spirits, so Satan was supposed to be helping humanity, more specifically the elect, but he was supposed to be helping us more than anyone else, and yet he is doing the exact opposite, and God has allowed it for his purposes, which I'm explaining clearly enough on this book and playlist. So he was blameless in his ways till wickedness was found in him, was God surprised about that wickedness? No. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He's always been, at least the Father. I cover it on another video. There's the Father God who has always been, and then there's the only begotten God, the Son. Anyway, he knows the end from the beginning, so when Satan rebelled, it didn't surprise him. Ephesians 1.11 tells us that God has worked out everything according to his purposes. So he figured out what he was going to do. He knew all the sins that we would do, and he worked it all into his plan, essentially. And because he rebelled, God drove him in disgrace from the Mount of God. He kicked him out of heaven. I expelled you, guardian cherub. Why? Because your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. Where God informed us in Luke 4, 6 that he gave him all authority and John 12, 31 tells us that he's the ruler of this world and 2 Corinthians 4, 4 tells us that he's the God of this world. This is who God has put in charge of humanity and he's a murderer a mass murderer and a psychopath. Why would God do that? God informed us that this life is a test. It was a test. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. Deuteronomy 13, 3. And we've proven that we don't. We love Satan more than him. Through the ages and through this ministry, especially through the body of Christ, born-again Christians, God is revealing the truth about what he says about us, that the human heart, every human heart, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, Jeremiah 17, 9. So that this is the verdict. Light has come into the world. And we're told that Jesus is the light of the world. He came into the world but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. John 3.19. And why is that? Because the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. He's revealing our need for Christ, for a change of heart. We're in desperate need of a change of heart, which is what Christ does for us when we finally admit the truth about ourselves that our heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. God blessed Satan so much that he got proud. And that's exactly what happened to the Jews. They were the chosen people and got seriously proud so that they handed Jesus over to the Romans to be killed. 
And it's the same thing that's happened to Christians, to born-again Christians got super proud so that they've rebelled, as I covered on this playlist, the video, The Rebellion. Born-again Christians have been blessed so much, given God's Spirit inside of them, according to Acts 5.32, which gives us the power, enabling us not only to obey Him, but to hear God's voice, have the discernment to hear God's voice, and see His hand in the world around us. Being so blessed, we got super proud as a group, the body of Christ. And when Satan did it, God threw him out of heaven. We're told in Ezekiel, I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God. I expelled you. I threw you to the earth. God humiliated him. He demoted him. And because he says, I, the Lord, do not change, Malachi 3, 6, he humiliated the Jews right? Because he's mostly been working with the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Luke twenty one twenty four. Some couldn't handle the truth and some could. And so the Jews, the leaders, had him killed. And a remnant of Jews, a few of them, believed the truth. They could handle it. They knew. They were honest. <laughs> they were honest. They knew it was true, they'd been super unfaithful, and that's what we deserve. So they became Christians, the first Christians. And nothing's changed. Some people can handle the truth, some can't. And most born-again Christians today can't. That's my 24-year testimony. And that's the testimony of the church, of the body of Christ for the last 2,000 years. Can't handle the truth, even though... They profess to know and love the truth. And because the body of Christ has rebelled, I discern he's also humiliating today's Christians. By being so proud and refusing to be held accountable historically, the born again have historically trashed their anointing. However, I discern, I'm hoping and praying, and I discern that after some others wake up to themselves, eventually today's born again will wake up to themselves, a good number of them, maybe all of them, and salvage their anointing. Again, as I'm explaining on this book and playlist, for those who will finally take God seriously and be given eyes that see,